Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to our Star Made Logic Masterclass. In the last episode, we covered our three logic gates, the NOT gate, the OR gate and the AND gate and explain how each can have their outputs influenced by the inputs it receives. In this episode, we're introducing the delay block and the whole concept of time, so let's not waste any more of it and jump right in. Up until now, whenever we've toggled an input, the signal would travel through the block instantaneously to the output. But by introducing delays, we can get more complicated reactions from our inputs through to our outputs. In StarMate, we've got two blocks capable of delaying our signals, our normal delay block and our non-repeating delay block. Both of these blocks introduce a half second delay. Let's show a basic example. Here I have an activation module going into a normal delay block, and then we have the output going into another activation module. Above the delay block, we'll draw a progress bar so we can see the delay. Now let's toggle the activation module on and off. You can see how the delay block doesn't change its state into a half second after it has received the input, and then it passes it onto whatever the output is connected to. If we add in another delay block, the time between when I push the first activation module and when the N1 changes is now one second. So now we have the basics of how delays work. They hold on to the new state they receive, then pass it on a half second later. Now let's start looking at some simple uses for these delay blocks. Take our activation module. On its own, it's just a lever or toggle switch. Let's now turn it into a button. We'll take the activation module and connect its output to an AND gate, and also to a delay block. Now let's take that same delay block and connect it to a NOT gate, which will be on because our delay block is currently off. Now let's take that NOT gate and connect it into the AND gate. At this point, let's break down what's happening. Our AND gate has two inputs going into it, the activation module and the NOT gate. And the AND gate needs both of these on to output on as well. If we toggle the activation module and look at what happens at zero seconds, you can see now that the AND gate has both of its inputs on, so it is outputting on. The activation module is also sending its on state to the delay block, and the delay block is holding onto that state because we're at zero seconds. Now let's go forward half a second. You can see the delay block has now outputted the on state it was holding onto, and in turn this has toggled the NOT gate to now be off. And because of that, now the AND gate has switched off again. If we toggle the activation module off, all that happens is the delay block and the NOT gate swapping states after the half second. To finish off this particular circuit, we need to connect the AND gate back to the activation module. We've now turned our activation module into a button. If we now switch it to an ON state, you can see after the half second it switches itself off. That's because as we showed before, at zero seconds the AND gate goes on and sends its state to the activation module. Remember, the activation module changes to the last state it was given. Then, after a half second delay, the NOT gate toggles off, which switches the AND gate off, in turn toggling the activation module now off. The activation module sends its off state to the delay again, and in half a second it and the NOT gate toggle again, resetting the whole circuit ready to have the activation module switched on again. This is how we turn activation modules into buttons, and we can take the output from either the activation module or the AND gate, and send it to other logic circuits. Another important circuit we can create is a clock. The simplest clock to create uses just a NOT block and a DELAY block. We connect the DELAY into the NOT and the NOT into the DELAY, and then toggle the DELAY. This will start them toggling every half second as the NOT sends alternating signals to the DELAY to then send back to itself. If we want a little bit more control over this clock, we can disconnect the NOT from the DELAY like so and then add in an AND gate and activation module. As you can see, we've connected the activation module to the AND gate, and now we can connect the NOT gate to the AND gate as well, and take the output of the AND gate and connect it to the delay block. At the moment, the NOT gate is the only block that's on, as the AND gate still needs the activation module to be on before it will output. Once we toggle the activation module, the AND gate is activated and passes its ON state to the delay, which delays the signal, then toggles the NOT. Because the knot is now toggled, the AND gate goes off, and the loop continues on and off. We can switch it off again simply by toggling the activation module to off. So that's clocks with a delay block. You can build them more complicated, but here it is in its simplest form. The delay non-repeating block acts in a slightly different way. 
it will output the signal after a half second. But if it's placed in a circuit where it can influence its own input, such as the clock we just built, it will only ever toggle once, it won't keep looping a signal. This block is only rarely used to resolve logic circuit issues, and on the whole the normal delay block will be just fine. So there's the delay blocks. They add a new dimension to your circuits and will be integral to building more advanced circuits as well. In the next episode we'll show you how to be able to build memory circuits so we can store value and the practical applications for it. Remember to subscribe and share this video around and I'll see you next time.